frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Football Daft, the Daft of Scottish Football Podcast around. My name's Stephen Pugden and let's welcome the team first, the biggest star of Scott squad. We've got him on this show. He reappeared as Tam Spragans again this week in a sensational sketch. It is the one and only Chris Toll. How's it going, Tam? What's happening, lads? He's good. Good, mate. Honestly, mate. It, nice. I mean, it's kind of Scott squad is back on the map again, mate. Were you back in it, mate? Uh, you know, it's like Junior, me and Junior Hansen fucking saving yeah. the day. Seven a day. day mate. Honestly, no, I, I, mate, obviously, let's welcome another man who is in Scott Squad as well. It's Gredo. Gredo what's happening? Challenge, all right. All right, all right, man. Anyway, Toll, it was good to see you back on the screen, mate. Thanks, honestly. mate. Thanks, it's mate. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. Yeah. Honestly, the, whole time, the whole time I was just thinking when we were filming it, I was like, what would Stevie do? That's all I was thinking. <laughs> I, I and, it's, it, and that's how it turned out good, mate, because you didn't do what I normally do. It was good, mate. You know what I mean? It was good. Yeah, it was good seeing you, nah, You've done well, Chris. <laughs> you done well, mate. Cheers, mate. You've done well, mate. A wee bit of work to be fucking, but you're not right, mate. Hey. It was, you know what I mean? It was like, it was, mate, you were... You were on it, mate. You were on it. You, Aye, you, it was good. Mate. Honestly, it was brilliant to see filming with him. It was brilliant. Because we'd done that for a bit... We were there for about an hour, weren't we? Aye, just, well, there it is. You know what, what are you was, doing? It was quite what a lot. What are you doing? 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 What are you I don't know if we should maybe pay our respects in any way to... Uh, uh, John Boy's hero, Dustin Diamond, Screech for Save by the Bell. We obviously lost him this week. Aye, uh, yeah. John, him, him, answer, you, mate. Him, him answer Tom. One after but, the other. Uh, I know, but I think this could pot- potentially be the last time John's doing this show because his career might really take off now that Dustin's no longer with us, man. I don't I know, but we'll think about it. They're, they're doing that reboot, aren't they? Aye, you could take out his cameo account. Aye, aye, aye. Could, man. <laughs> right, I don't know why you say, I'll take the glasses off if you're watching the, the video version. Oh, Dustin. <laughs> oh, Dustin, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. It's like, it's like when, it's like when our lady aye. appears in front of folk. You know what I mean? Like, John, do you know the words to the song, man? You could even get the song on when I wake up in the morning. In the morning and and the longest, longest I don't right. think I'll ever make it on time. By, By the time, time I grab my books and I give myself, and I give a, myself look a look, I'm at the corner oh, just in time to see the bus fly by. It's, it's all right. right. What, John? Join in. You know the well, if... I was more of a Slater fan. <laughs> <laughs> You don't fucking look like AC Slater. Oh, right? no, no. <laughs> if it's no Dustin Diamond, I'm going for Alec Cleland. You're a dead ringer for Alec Cleland, man. Alec Cleland? <laughs> you do? Uh, you know what I mean? I don't see that. I don't uh, see it. You kidding on? Are you being serious? By the way, I'm, I'm worried for Fuck John off, here. He looks as if he wants to fight us. I know. Right, <laughs> honestly, boys, it was good to see his back on Scott Squad on our, on our screens. It was great seeing you back on the old telly box. Let's cut right to it. What has been happening in Scottish football since we last spoke? Celtic were at home to St Mirren and get beat, and Shane Duffy had a fucking blinder again. Toll, is this guy, is he working undercover for Rangers Football Club? Mate, I've got no fucking idea what he's doing. And he's got no fucking idea what he's doing either, but it looks like What about that? Like, right, just, just wipe the slate, right? He's mm-hmm. only Rangers fans now. Just right. see this for see this for a point of view as a football fan. Okay. Gonna try and explain to me what the fuck that guy's trying to do. I, I mean, I don't, I mean, even the one where he's laid the ball off and he's went to make a wee dash into the box and he's ran right into Sorrow. <laughs> 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 no, 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 the best, no, the best part is too, right? He's six foot three. He's built a brick uh, shit house. He runs he into Sorrow done. and fucking falls in his ass. I uh, Sorrow just stuns you. He's the only footballer I've ever seen with a cauliflower arse. No, I mean, <laughs> Which, what is it? What is it, deal, Tom? Man, is a do you think he'll play again? Because this has happened all season and they still play him. I don't know, is there something in a contract or I don't know, but it just we're recording, mind, we're recording on Thursday here and right. he's played in Tuesday, didn't he? I don't, I don't think he played in Tuesday, didn't he? No, no he never played in Tuesday. Welsh think, played, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Welsh played in Tuesday, but I think that might be to do with a plastic pitch. To mm. be honest with you, I think that might have something to do with it. Um, do you know what? See if Neil Lennon's 
putting Barkas out of the team, who has been shite, let's be honest. But he's saying, oh, he's, his performances haven't been up to scratch. What the fuck mm. is he seeing in Duffy? You know what I mean? It's it's baffling. It's it's completely baffling. It's it, it baffles my mind to death. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and what what about Edward? He's refusing to sign a new contract, isn't he? Would you? And what about in Tramp? I know what's happened with that. Nichan, I know. Nichan felt Vilash Boash was fucking. He, 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 he's, he didn't mince his words, didn't he? Know? Who the fuck's Philip Vilash Boash? <laughs> What? Did you, you, call him, you called him Philip Via, Vilas Boas. No, I didn't. I said and Vias Boas. Oh, I, I didn't um, say Philip. Uh, Philip. I said, I said Philip. Right, right. I'll put my mortgage on this if John could show you the cut. The okay. edit. I did right. not say Philip. Okay. Right, I don't want to take your house off you, Stevie. Right, I, said, so, and, <laughs> I said, I said, and what about Vilas Boas? No right. mincing his words. Okay. I, I, do you know what? Getting to the point about that. What are ready for? What are ready for the charm? Straight mm-hmm. away. What are they for Marseille? And what are they mm-hmm. for, for Vias Boas? Because, it, you know, it, it just goes to show that you don't know what's going on behind closed doors at football clubs. You don't know who's making the signings. You don't know what's going on. And if I'm if I'm the manager of a club and they're bringing in a player who he's come out and said he's not a good person for a start, mm-hmm. what does that mm-hmm. tell you? Do you know what I mean? And yeah. he's, he's, he's no missed him and hit the wall, basically. So. No. I I'm, I'm glad I'm glad he's out of my club. To be honest, the kind of the the talk, yeah, new managers kind of simmered down a wee bit, hint it. Are you still what are you thinking? Uh, Stevie, I, I honestly don't know what's going on. Mate. I'm not I'm not going to try and hazard a guess because, like I say, is there a minute ago, you've got no fucking idea what's going on behind closed doors. Mm. Um, it's, so you think you think Yelda Jink Yelda sells everyone's been approached. I, <laughs> they they I two know, guys are brilliant, by the I way. I don't know. I don't if know he's... if he or she. Is is right, right for the job. <laughs> have, you, have you seen these two guys? You need, you need to go to the podcast. Ah, he's, just, he's just fucking quoted them. Of course, he's seen it. <laughs> fucking brilliant. Who's it? Kiniakos. Fucking Kiniakos. Which the? I mean, you don't know what kind of pedigree Yerda sells everyone's go him or, or a Cooper, huh? You don't yep. know. Uh, he no, or she or she. Uh, <laughs> it's what he was. But troops, the big story of the week. Has got to be Jobby Gate at Jobby all times. Grado, Grado doesn't like talking about it because he's got IBS the same as me, you know what aye, I mean? So he knows, he knows the script, but I um, I think we'll, we'll probably touch on it later on in the show, but I, I agree. A uh, yes I, or a no? Should they have been sacked? Yes or no? No, he's having a joke, isn't he? Grado. Hard one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or was it <laughs> oh. <laughs> Was it a ghost there? Was it a fucking messy one? No, I mean, you don't, you don't know. No, I mean, the guy could have had a bit of situation on his hands, and he's. Exactly. You need to go. You need to go for a Tom Kite. You need to go. No, I mean, so, I, I, know. I can see Grado gets a bit anxious. Just these kind of things because we'll, we'll, we'll get more chat about football later on, and we'll have the football open line as well. So just sit back, relax, look forward to it, trips. And this week we also welcome. Former Kilmarnock and Rangers centre half, it's Rob Cairn into the show. Plus, we'll have another contestant on the player profile playoff. And on the big question, we're asking who is the worst player to pull on the jersey for your club? Right, troops, there's nobody on earth that knows more about car crashes than me, Neil Lennon, and Shane Duffy. Am I right? You're here. You're here. No, you're wrong because there is somebody that knows more about car crashes. It's where pals at G4 claims. <laughs> hey, so remember, if you've been in a road traffic accident and you're not at fault, G4 claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with a complete accident management support that you require. They'll recover their costs from the at fault party. They'll sort out a like for like vehicle replacement. They'll also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be fucked, they will recover the pre-accident value for your car and write you a big fat check for it. And the best of all, it won't even cost you a brass bra zoo. As they charge the at fault insurance directly. G4 claims don't cold call. 
They don't buy data, and once they've processed your claims, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is Nicole and the team over there won't take on your case if they don't think that they can help. So if you've been, a, been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, go on to G4 Claims on 01698 767172. That's 01698 767172. Get them at notafallclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. I recommend that you get them on social media at G4 Claims Limited on Instagram. That's all I'm going to say. All right. G4 Claims, not at full claims. Maybe. Maybe. It's Football Daft Open Line. It's the open line where you can say anything you want. If you want to talk about the current situation at Celtic, they don't Stephen probably do, uh, you can do I'll that. Talk about it. Uh, perhaps you want to be, speak about uh, Dundee United's current lows are in bad form at the moment, not looking good. Or maybe you want to talk about Jobby Gate at Hamilton. Everything is welcome on the Football Daft. That, that guy's career's went right in the pan, isn't it? Hey! hey! See, to be honest, the Hammond he's, commentators are always talking shit. Hey! 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 He's, he's definitely hurt the skids, man. Hey! <laughs> I, t- I tell you what, that'll be a stain on his CV. Hey! <laughs> hey! Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> that was a good one. You said it Fucking dead. bummer troops, eh? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll avoid us deadpan humour. Hey! <laughs> 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 <I'll> be... <laughs> it's like if you're sitting up, you're trying to get another one, aren't you? I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, he did have it coming though because it wasn't the first time he had done it, it was his number two time. Oh, <laughs> oh mate, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. John, 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 since John said that, he's all embarrassed. He's looking dead flushed. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll stop with the pun uh, and we'll hand over to our uh, football experts. It's Stephen Cavins, Graham Goody and Chris Delhon. And we're going to go to our first call, which is a bit different this week. Um, this is a band um, who are coming in. You might have seen them on the telly. Uh, they did a song about Partick Thistle. They've got a new single out. Um, I thought you were going to pull this the CD out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my like Graham Norton. We've got a new single out called Bad Tattoo. It's a band called The Heights, and here comes Adam from the band on the open line. Oh, Adam. Adam. How's it going, Adam? Are you all right? Is that a house coat? <laughs> no, it's a some mad shirt. Like, ah, my jeans, man. Right. See, Chris, these guys, see the way they dress? I'd love to be able to pull it off, man. Aye. It's like, you know what I mean? It reminds me of, like, we Scott Fletcher or some grado. Can just Aye, go about I don't want to say, you can't say trampy looking, because no. then... <laughs> no, 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 hipsters. Yeah, like hipsters. But it's cool like hipsters. tramps. Aye. It's like... Aye. They've, Aye. Obviously, Aye. they've obviously been on stitchfix.com, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's quirky, quirky. I love it. Aye. Thank, Aye. thank you, guys. That's a game, that's a game, so listen. And oh, no, here comes Sam, here, here comes Sam. Oh, here we come, Sam, here comes, he comes running in. Let's go, Sam. Let's welcome the other member of Heights. It's Sam coming to the open line now as well. There we go. Hey. Oh. How's it going, mate? How you oh, doing, mate? Sorry, hey. I thought it was half past. What is happening? What is What's happening, my man? You all right? I'm good, man. How are you? See, that's what I mean. I know. Look at his moustache. I'd love I to know. be able to pull some of that off. I'm getting there, by the way. Check that, buddy. Oh, but, it is. But it's, it, I don't know if he's quite suited, but I told man. <laughs> 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 You know, what are you talking about? I had a big fucking handlebar moustache at your last show in the pavilion, mate. That was a beauty. Yeah. Listen, lads, just ignore Gredo, right? You spoke to him before. Me and Stevie are going to talk to you, right? Tell us about the heights. What's been going on? I I just need to say something. I don't like your name. No? (laughs) I don't like your name. Why not? Why, why do you think? I don't, I don't know, that's why I want you to fucking tell me. Well, if I stood up, if I stood up you'd know all about it, my man, all right? Mate, I, I, I'm, the, I'm the height of shite, but when I stand next to Toe, I look like fucking Andre the Giant or something, I mean. A SOS song. What is the best song I've heard in years? And I'm not... Oh, man, that's, that's so nice. Okay, man. And then I remember, I remember getting a drink, I think that, that Friday night, getting mad with it, and I was sitting recording myself, sending it to your Instagram. I was getting a drink, singing it. 
<laughs> but not only that, it's, see the see the music video. The music video is superb or not? It's it's funny. Where was that filmed, by the way? It's uh, filmed some... in like an old pub down in London somewhere. Was um, it Bethnal Green? No, it was Peckham. No, we spoke about this. Did no, I ask this Bethnal before? Green. Sorry, Aye. mate. Sorry, mate. No, no, no. no it was it was near there though. It, it it must have been. I don't know. Yeah, but it was it was an old working man's pub. There were some guys in there that like because half of the pub was open at the time and we were in some weird little room, like we like segment of it. And there were some guys there that just did not want us there at all. Like <laughs> cru- cruisers that were like, you know, casu- not casuals, but like you- locals. And they just Aye. looked at us like we're fucking pixies or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, did you, Adam, did you say that it was in Peckham, I? Aye. Did you film it down there because you don't need to pay any income tax or VAT? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. It's a bell tucker, right. man. I don't get that. Uh, only for your horses. Still your horses, you're oh, fucking right. in your hell cradle. Right, Toops, have you got a new album out there then? Uh, no, we've got an EP coming out. That's right. the thing these no. days. You don't, it takes ah, you for fuck's sake. Bob, man, what is this? Fucking 2006, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> we wish we were doing an album, but we're with the label, and the label, it takes fucking years to get to an album. So hopefully, nice. in five years, if I've still got a job, then we'll release an album. But <laughs> Stephen's like, Stephen's like, have you got a new eight track coming out? Hi, <laughs> hi, guys, where can I buy the cassettes, man? <laughs> <laughs> Mini disc. Hey, man. It's called, well, the EP's not even out yet, but it's out in a couple of months. But we've got a new song that's out like last week called Bad Tattoo. Bad, Bad Tattoo. tattoo. Aye, that's, good. Like that's good as well, by the way. What's, but see, a lot of folk will maybe be listening to this show, they'll maybe want to find out about this Partick Fistle song that he's done. Yeah. yeah. What, was, what was the story behind that? Where he's asked to, is, is, it a, is it a Fistle song or did you just write that? No, well, no. It's, it's Billy Connolly, Divorce. It's some Billy Connolly uh, song. <laughs> no way. The 70s no. And then, so it is. I and then Big Welsh that. When when Gredo let me hear it, I says Billy Connolly's going to sue these fuckers. For this <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't even steal it for Billy Connolly. We stole it for Big Welshie, who I think either played for a part of this or managed them or did both. And now he, he's a Scottish footballer. I can't remember his first name. Brian Welsh, maybe. And then he went to America to be a coach. He did this song. He put it on YouTube for part of this. And we got asked by the BBC to do this TV show and they were like, oh, we should do this thing. It's like every at the end of every show, they have like a band that does a song. And we watched it and it was all like hipster guys with beards singing like, we thought, fuck it, if we're going on there, we want to take the piss. So like, no one should ever let us anywhere near a telly. So we were like, if we're going on the BBC, then let's do something fucking mental. And then next day, I, I swear to God, it got released and all this stuff. And, and the producers, we turned up, we were expecting the BBC to be like, you need to fuck off. How dare you bring such a fucking joke of a thing to us, right? But then they were like, oh no, this is great. Like, we really like it. And we we're like, class. And then the week that it got released, I don't know, I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but when you go kind of like viral on Twitter, oh, especially yeah. on Scottish Twitter, and it's mostly- Yes, yeah, once or twice, <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> it's fucking mental. And all you can see is all these people like, I was like 20 people's um, cover photos. People were calling me every name under the sun. I was Because like, for some reason, I got it way more than Sam as well. Sam just stood at the back and like did his DJ thing. I was prancing about the front and they were all saying, this guy can't dance and all that shit. I'm worried. What was it? They called you a soybean or something like that? If what a soybean had a face. And also, <laughs> some guy said, who's the guy? Joe Pasquale. They said, this guy looks like I... Joe Pasquale. <laughs> What? <laughs> <It's really laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, and there was worse ones I can't repeat, but they were, those were the funny ones. Guys, is it not yeah. true? Like, there's a whole bunch of Partick Thistle uh, fans team up to see it a gig in Aberdeen <laughs> off the back of the song. Yeah, yeah, that was true. Actually, they came all the way from Peterhead or something like that, and then we don't we 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 on that tour we said I said on Twitter right if if you want to come and see because we used to at gigs get people just shouting Thistle the whole time, so I was like right. We're gonna sing. We're gonna so, 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 so. Stephen, let the guy. Stephen, let the guys talk. And it's heavily Sorry, different mate. from our usual crowd of like wine mums and like weird men that just like want to dance to our weird pop music. So it was this really strange crowd of like people that just wanted to hear all the dancey stuff and then people that just wanted to hear the part of Thistle song. So I said on Twitter, right, if you want to hear the part of Thistle song live, come to this tour because it's the last tour we're gonna do it, right? And then after the two nights on the tour. It, it was going really wrong so we're like right we've got to stop playing it because it would just like people would just go mental and like it just wasn't the right kind of vibe but then these guys had come all the way just to see it so at the end of the 
end of the gig they were like breaking into our green room being like we've traveled all the fucking way to see this i was like look lads it's fine like come in and like i'll sing it on you the guitar i'll sing you on the guitar and they all sang it together and they fucking loved it they're like the guy one of the guys was absolutely steaming and he just kept repeating this is the best fucking night of my life by the way big man here, big. <laughs> Hey, that, that, that sounds like a scene for Superbad, man, when he's got to get a do. <laughs> <laughs> they, make, they, make, they make him sing a song. Oh, oh, man, yeah. superb, man. How funny is it imagining that? Just the fucking all these grown men stunning there in your green. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't, the first ever gig I went to, I probably shouldn't have. He, he's not the first gig I went to, the guy's in, he's in the jail now. Oh, Lost Profits? You, it's okay. No, no, it was, it's although okay. I've seen, I seen Lost Profits. Yeah. You can see what is it. But I'm only saying. Well, my first gig was Gary Glitter, and in 1993, and he and uh, he went right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm 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 more I'm more impressed with the fact that Adams went straight to the fucking Lost Profits. Is <laughs> <laughs> is if he's is if he's the only musician that's ever been to the jail. <laughs> but, but it's like we're having a nice wee chat and all that good stories. And Gabe just goes, "My first gig was Gary Glitter." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just trying to tell you that leader well, of the guys, gang was... thanks for coming on. You still never come on again. Basically, half the crowd left, and he he never played it. But then he'd come on in a motorbike and eventually played it, and it caused a bit of folk running back in. And oh, you really? about us? <laughs> don't know. Hey, guys, well, uh, tell us about bad tattoo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, yeah, oh, anyway, for fuck's sake. It's funny that your your song's called Bad Bad Tattoo because that's how Gradle get his fucking nickname. Was <laughs> <laughs> it Marty, by the way? Was it? That. Was it? Well, I was in Magaluf and I I go to tattoo. Nobody ever called me Gradle. It was a kind of thing. We all get chucked out of a hotel and. Somebody, somebody called me at Primary 7 for about fucking three years and I decided to put it in my ear. After. It's a long story, but anyway, I tried to scratch it after the next day, but then that's it's became my name, so fuck it. <laughs> what? You don't know that, Bob? No, I do. I just, I'm loving the way you're telling the stories today, man. Uh, but that's that, suppose what it's all about, isn't it? It's oh, a I, tattoo, that's what it's about, isn't it? You know, it's just I, well, I, I got a tattoo in Magaluf on my arse as well. Um... And Sam's got a fucking belter of a tattoo in his eyes. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah. I was, I was, I was at a party once, and I, at the time, I really, I had a fascination with Kenny Loggins. You know that? Oh, oh, I do oh that brilliant man! Um, Aye. And I wanted, I, I wanted Danger Zone tattooed on me somewhere, <laughs> or just somewhere. And right, right around the time, right around the time I was wanting this, I was, I w- went back to an after party and. The guys had a proper tattoo. Like sometimes you go up, or like some some people have like stick and poke things. And I, but I went to this part and they had a full on fucking gun, like a full on rig with a pedal and shit like that. <laughs> and they were like, right, who's up next? And I was like, okay, sweet, I want this. Uh, maybe on Mars because I don't want my mom to see it. Um, and they're like, right, sweet, sweet, sweet. And I, like, I just want it tiny, like danger zone, nowhere near, you know, Mars, because people think, you know, I'm, there's an attack. Danger zone. There, there's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I asked him, I asked him to do it tiny, just on like the side of pretty much my hip, and it was he was fucking sparkled, and he was, I started doing it, and I felt it just slowly, the pain slowly going right across my arse cheek, and I was like, "You alright?" I was looking back at him, like, "Is it going well, man?" Is it, is it going well? And, he sat, and, his, and he was like, "I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done." And he just done danger, and his pal at that time butts in, and he's like, "No, no, no, I'll take the rest of it, man. I'll do a better job. This is straight. I'll, I'll do a better job." And without even consulting me, he just starts on the other cheek. And it's even bigger this time. So I've got I've got danger like slightly like getting bigger and bigger on one cheek and then zone even bigger on the other. It's fucking brutal. Man. And I went I went home the next day and I showed my mum it and she's just burst out into tears. It was well but, guys, thanks very much for coming on football daft. Really appreciate your time. Uh, go out and get uh, bad tattoo, whatever you get your HMV, John Menzi, Virgin, Virgin Megastore. <laughs> Zab, Zavi. Is that price? Air price. So it's H Y Y T S, and I'm telling you, they've got a new the, the bad tattoo. is superb. I love it, and also S O S. Check that out. And I, I don't know if I'd like to promote that or not, but that's fucking yeah, tremendous. Sure. That song, man. <laughs> so that was the heights. Let's move on to our next court on the open line. It's Mark. How are you doing, guys? How are you You're doing, bad, Mark? You all right? Bad. There we go. Oh, Rangers fan. That's a surprise. Yeah. There we go. Mark, you're on the open line. What would you like to speak to the boys about? 
How you doing, guys? Um, so Good. what I'd like to ask is, I was watching the football results come in last night, and I seen that Tony that plays for Brentford um, actually mm -hmm. scored his twentieth goal of the season, <laughs> and there was a lot of talk he was going to join Celtic. Obviously, what's the biggest transfer that you've seen almost come to your club but not quite manage it? Oh, okay. get, me, get, that's a great question, by the way. For me, it, was, right um, it was Jardel for Rangers. Yeah, you know, that's he was exactly in the stand. We thought he was there, and then it just never quite. Um, but they're talking about that Tony scoring 30 goals this year. Do you know what mm. I mean? So that's Aye. some miss. Do you know what? The, one of the biggest signings I think I was really wanting to happen for Rangers, and it nearly happened. It was the same kind of setup as Jardel. He was in the stadium and he's been on this show, and it showed when he didn't sign for us and he went to Celtic how much. That's crazy. Hartson. Yeah. Hartson. Hartson. Aye. Aye. Oh, but definitely. What, see, the, the, the funny, the first thing I thought about was, was Jardel because I remember I, I think Aye. it was at the 95 96 season. That was my first season with season ticket. Did he, did, he get, did he get put? Was he paraded or was he just told he was. How many, how many misses got a tour of the stadium that? They were there, right? I, I, I remember seeing him in the Rangers tracky. Aye, aye, the, aye, the, aye. Exactly. The, the, one the Adidas one. The, aye, white, the white, 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 white. But do you know what popped into my head? I know. Do you remember Kuzan coming back just before we went into administration? Remember that? And he was, I think we were, we were, we were playing at Hamilton. And, That's uh, right. he, he, and he, he was in the, the, he was decked out in the track suit. And I think he had just signed the night before. Aye. And I don't know what, I, I think I, I think I just got cancelled, didn't I? I think I just got stuck. I completely forgot all about that. You're right, right. Yeah. Aye, I don't know. I've got, I've got two for me. One, David Ginola. We, we had him in the fucking in the, uh, what do you call it, the boardroom. Boardroom. Ready, really? ready, ready to sign, and he get his agent gets a phone call, and it was Newcastle. We want to sign you. Really? He got up, he got up and walked out to Parkhead and went down and signed for. Newcastle. Oh, guy. And <laughs> I know what your other one's going to. I know what your other one's going to be too. Rivaldo. No, I was going to say Nacho Novo. No, fuck <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I thought no, John listen, for Celtic. Nah, Nacho Novo. He said no to the Celtic team. You yeah. know. <laughs> but I also remember. I, I, I remember. Probably around about the same time as the Jardel one. I remember in the paper every day it was Viali. Viali was going to come to Rangers. Aye, for Chelsea, I'm sure. Was, it it, was, there, was there no talk that fucking Ronaldo was going to sign for Aye, that Ronaldo? Ronaldo? Advocate, no. say, was it not? Or David Murray said he only need to play the European games. Aye, well, Aye, that's that. right. Fucking Imagine man, having a season right. ticket but no buying the fucking European tickets. I know. You'd never get into see Ronaldo playing for your team. That's anyway, a good, that, that was a good question. That was a great question, question. Well, anyway, That was good chat. Oh, that was brilliant, that. mate. Thanks, mate. Let's move on to our next call on the open line. It is Dylan. Dylan Old. See if this isn't a Celtic support. How are you doing, Dylan? Oh, oh, that that one. One. Yeah. Short corner. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> sitting there looking like a fucking Parma Violet. <laughs> that's, that's, that's an old school hey, jersey, boys. Dylan. I, I know, that but, door, oh, I remember that. It's a knockoff, but it's all right. Oh, I, I know mean, I bought I've one got, from, I've a, got from a nephew. Wardrobe. I've got a wardrobe full of them. Don't worry about it. Best what, of gear. You're through the open line, Dylan. What do you want to say? Just a bit about the, the consistency thing with Rangers and how they're um, talking about refereeing and stuff like that. Obviously, Morelos gets cited for violent conduct uh, against against Hibs. Um, I just I don't get the whole consistency thing because I think over the past few seasons, Morelos has had plenty of abuse and he's been targeted with kind of violent conduct as well. Um, just the other day, Hibs TV, somebody from Hibs TV said that... Um, he should be chopped up and sent to different locations in Scotland or whatever. I bet he didn't say he was having a shite, but did he? <laughs> ah, that's that's what's going to happen. That, that guy gets sacked, and yet we're still hearing anything about this this whole. Ah, you can, yeah, listen, you can't sack Evan Welsh, mate. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> aye. I mean, <laughs> he, 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 he never done a shite, levels, man. <laughs> yeah. No, I I totally get what you mean. I get what you mean. Uh, uh, there is uh, there is a lot of. Problems with consistency now. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that are being said. Strange. I think, I think it's all down to the whole lockdown. I think to be honest with you, I think a lot of people just are, are losing the fucking their mind. I mean, uh, for Irvin Welsh to come out and say that about Morelos, for me, it was completely unprofessional. Even, even as a Celtic supporter, right? I, Morelos isn't my number one fucking guy, obviously, right? But to 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 intimate that you want the guy to be murdered. 
is fucking ridiculous, right? Aye. Told you I loved think, it. No, I great what I did, mate, and I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not telling you lies. I didn't. He was, he was fucking retweeting it for his burner account on Twitter, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was me that fed him the line. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but it, I think, I think quite, quite a lot of the backlash that Tanner's been getting for it, it's unwarranted. Um, 100%. But, but um, the I Irvin Welsh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Of Irvin Welsh, I love all his books. I love. I love all the movies that have been made for his books and stuff like that, but for him to come out and say that, I think it's completely fucking stupid, to be honest with you, and he's trying to, he's trying to make himself out to be a bigger Hibs fan than he actually is, and, it, you know, I, I all right, we, we know that he's, he's, Hibs have featured in his movies and his books and stuff like that before, but he's, for him not to be cited for that, not to be pulled up for it, um, straight, straight away was silly for Hibs TV, but I think, um, I, I think there's, there's more that could be said, but you know, I don't want to get myself into bother. Yeah. Fuck that man. Bob, don't touch that man. What if there's a train spot in free? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding on my hands froze. I was nearly like that with lost Stevie. <laughs> no, I think what you're touching on there, Dylan, it's right, the consistency thing with the compliance officer and all that. I think it's been well documented social media. You've seen the amount of tackles that have went unpunished in this oh, country. Morelos, Morelos went the start of the season. The first game of the season, somebody tackled him and he had a chunk of his leg. Aye, exactly. it, Could you imagine if that... All I'm going to say is, could you imagine if that was Morelos? Aye. There's, na- there's nobody ever going to tell me there's no one rule for a lot of the other players and one rule for Morelos, because that is just the way it looks. In saying that, though, it's not... A, the, the, what we're talking about is club media here. So, obviously, we, we, we touched on the Hamilton thing. It was Hamilton that made that decision. It has to be Hibs TV that would made that decision or offer an apology. I'm not too sure. I, I'm not clued up to see if Hibs actually offered an apology on that. But, you know, the likes of the SPFL... They phoned Rangers, apparently. Aye, they did. They phoned, they phoned Rangers, Rangers right. Well, you know, it's... That, up, that, up, that, that was, that was bigger them, wasn't it? That was bigger them. For fuck's sake. Listen, sorry. Right, see, 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 at the end of the day, the referee in Scotland is a fucking shambles anyway. We all know that. We know that, don't we? Yeah. So, I suppose I've bad referees, because some of the referees have like, officiated the, the biggest cups in the world, biggest tournaments in the world. So it's so so bad referees. Yeah, they're, fu- they're fucking dreadful. Well, they're every worse. single one of them. Well, they're worse. Every, geez, I take it you never watched the game last night. Fucking Kamar Roof nearly put the cunt over the fucking broom one stand. And only got a yellow card. It's oh, all I coming mean... out now, isn't it? What, 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 about, <laughs> what, what, about, what about Clamara's yeah. elbow, man, against Livingston? Uh, exactly. <laughs> you still bringing that up? Listen, we've got Aye. a new one. We've got a new one. Scott Brown punched a guy the other night, right? Fucking... Aye. Have a, have a go at that one. I love <laughs> Scott Brown. Scott Brown, they scored on it. Yeah. Yes, come on. That's the, that's the thing, but Stevie, that's what I'm saying. Regardless of what team it is, the level of fucking officiating in Scottish football is absolutely abysmal. It's abysmal. Yeah. Well, I hope that answers your question, uh, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> Off on a tangent of. about referee now, but uh, thanks, thanks a lot, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks for coming on, mate. All the best. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. And that's it for this week. Remember, if you want to get on next week, best way to do it, get on your Patreon, patreon.com forward slash football daft, or we'll get you on Twitter. Football daft. Big question. <laughs> Right, this week, Chris stated that Shane Duffy is the worst player to ever pulled on a Celtic strip. So we have asked, who's the worst player to have graced your team? Who are you think, Troops? I think I've said this before, but I think without a doubt for me, it's going to be Sadiq. Umar yeah. Sadiq, absolute Terrible. imposter. Terrible, It is just... I don't know, that that just that whole situation wound me up. I'd even like the way he was carrying on the press conference. I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh, but the, the, the game against Aberdeen and what was it, the semi-final of the League Cup a couple oh. of years ago? Aye, I see when Lewis Ferguson scored the winner, wasn't it? Aye, I've said, I've said every two minutes uh, mm-hmm. and then gone down in the box. I thought it was just mm-hmm. unforgivable. Absolutely unforgivable. I, you'll go far to see a worse player than that. He was terrible, man. You're still sticking with Duffy at all? I'm taking Duffy out the, out the equation. Right. There's been a right few, man. To be honest with you, there's been a right few bangers, but I, I'm going to... Willow Flood was fucking atrocious, man. No, you can't say that, man. I, I can say that, mate. You never seen him. It was fucking dreadful, honestly. So bad. So, yes. so bad. The I, worst, but one of the worst. They nah, put on the listen, same game. 
Uh, well, you, you can go What's back. What's in Barkas? You've, you've, got, you've got fucking Carol Muggleton and all that going back all the years, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, my cousin actually texted me about this saying, do you honestly think Duffy was the worst? And my cousin's a Rangers fan and he rhymed after these select players and I swear to God, I started getting Vietnam fucking flashbacks. Mm-hmm. I'm not even joking, <laughs> honestly. But uh, yeah. it depends, depends how far back you go. I know, it is one of the ones. I mean, you could go back, I don't know, man. Remember Dragan Ladanovic? Mm-hmm, aye. For fuck's sake. He's terrible. And then that was him with the hair, wasn't it? Aye, and Federico Nieto. You could you could argue Fr- Franny Jeffers coming up here and no Franny scoring Jeffers. a goal. You could argue that. You could uh, argue Joey Barton. You could. You really you could. could. Aye. Um, Do you know who I fucking hated? I, I, I don't know, I'll not use the word hated again in case mm-hmm. we ever cross paths and he comes on the show. I didn't hate him. I just didn't think he was good enough to play for our club. Mm-hmm. Ian Black. Ian Black. He gets a right certain, time, yeah. Oh. All he of them are mad. Oh. Did you just Google him, yeah? No, it looks like a hub, but no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Who you had in there, too? John, I might know John's yeah. as well, man. It'll be probably somebody that listens to the show or something like that, I bet you. Oh, it's anything Paul Hartley signed for Falkirk. Fucking, <laughs> I'll be oh. honest with you, man. We had we had some fucking we had some toppers, but I think, honestly, I think Tony Cascarino was up there, man. Tony Cascarino was fucking garbage for Celtic, man. Mm. Honestly, so bad, so so bad. Well, we see what the punters think. Aye, let's see Aye, what right. Think. So Roberto says, "Let's go with Sender." Or so we can maybe ask. Or guest about that. We've got uh, Rob Keelan on the show today. He says, like Barton came with reputation, but fuck me, he'd never known he was a commanding defender for Arsenal at one point and a good Arsenal team as well. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I, I, when, I, when I think he said Ross, I just think he then barely. And I just yep. think he the 5 1 game. 5 1 game. Aye, mm-hmm. aye, wasn't good. Uh, Wally Clemmy. Clemmy. Climey has said Dragon. I saw. I said Dragon Ladinovic or Jeremy Rothen. Remember him? Remember him, man. Rothen what was the, Rothen. He, he came with a fucking pedigree, that boy. Uh, I'm right. I remember. A, I think his debut was at Fort Park. Maybe I, I think we won the game, and I f- he was actually no bad. I thought, but it. Do you know who came with a massive pedigree, and he was a fucking absolute baller. Weavers. He am as well, but Jonas Term. Right. But it, was, it was terrible, but apart from the goal he scored against Sir Kyle, it was a peach. That was but, a fucking great goal. Aye. But it was terrible, man. It was terrible. When you go, to you like to the next get, one, We've mate. got John here saying Dirk Borrington. Mm-hmm. By the way, that's a great shout. He was aye. red rotten. He also says Ian Wright could be thrown in there alongside Henri Kamara and Olivier I Tebbly. I don't remember him. You don't Dude. remember who? But Borrecta? No. Do you know? yeah. Oh, Borrecta! Aye. Aye. Ah, really say it like that, aye. Aye, it was fucking rotten, man. It was what? rotten. Did you know always, do you know always give Evander Snow a bit of self time out as well? Aye, Evander, Evander Snow was fucking shite. Really? I thought Evander Snow was a, well, he looked like he was going to be a, a decent prospect at one point, did he not? He had one good game, mate. Well, I mean, he had one good game and everybody was like, ah, yes, we've got, we've got the new fucking whoever. Do you know what Wanyama. I mean? Frank, Frank Reichard or somebody like that. But no, he was, he was dug me. Honestly, dug me. Kevin has uh, gotten to say, being a Hearts fan, the list is pretty long, but Joe Pereira for me. Joe Pereira, is that Pereira? Pereira. 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 We had a Herrera. (laughs) Herrera, Pereira. Oh, Herrera's going to be my name. Herrera. He Uh, he just liked going about taking Instagram pictures of fucking Aaron and all that, didn't he? George, oh, I remember this one, says, Eagle Austinstad for Rangers. What a load of shite. Even even passed for an amateur player when playing for Rangers and yet he played at the highest level for Southampton and Blackburn. Mm-hmm. It's very true. I remember... Can't you believe he got to a European Cup them. final with Southampton and Blackburn? <laughs> the classic headline for Celtic, eh, for in the papers when we signed him, the eagle has landed. Yep. It was terrible. 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 Fuck's sake. Sideshow Bob has, has another one that's listed some names that's giving me flashbacks, man. I've got a story about one of them. Do we? Right. Do they didn't get your pub then, did they? No, I got his name on the back of my jersey. <laughs> what, you got do we? Oh, Aye. do we, Aye. didn't you? Aye. Aye. You, got your dad, you got your dad to change it after the game. Aye, because it was squinty. The, the, the print was squinty. I seen the game. I sent my dad back down to the Celtic shop with it. <laughs> uh, Colin Kazim <laughs> Richards. Miku. I'm not, ha- I'm not having Miku. I thought Miku was actually all right. Um, he couldn't score in a barrel of fannies, but he was a good player. Um, Magnus Hedman and Barkas, I could go on. Mm. 
Callum, yeah. or not Shoe Joke, what was it me? Was it me? Shoe Grad. Callum says, Emil Ling for Dundee United was diabolical. He would struggle to tie his own shoelaces. What's that got to do with being a footballer? Gavin has also got in touch. Top flight, James Beatty. Oh, he was He's buzzing. I was buzzing with Sting Time because I remember. Who's our man? Do you remember the way manager? Mate, he's, manager on the I, PlayStation. He was a, he was a five star. Aye, he was a five star to play anywhere up top, anywhere yep. the big fucking square. He, I was buzzing, but looks uh, as if he was running for a treacle every time we got up aye. the ball. Gavin ball. says was buzzing when we signed them. First transfer we paid money for in about two years. Cart horse always injured, no goal speaks for itself. Wouldn't have looked out of place in the third place championship side down the divisions. How long have you got? Well, we've not mm-hmm. got that long to keep talking, Gavin. But it was rotten. It was terrible. But he, he was a, in his day, man. He was a great striker. Great striker uh, he, day, did, did he not? He, he was the, one of the first players to get 20 in a Premier League season for a uh, long time, wasn't he? Was brilliant. Great striker, man. Aye. Brian says, Anestis and I agree you. Agree you, was <laughs> oh, it? Agree I you, I, I agree, agree I remember him, man. Mate, he, he must have been terrible because I can't even remember this guy. Mm, uh, he was, he was he for was, Rangers. He, he wouldn't get a game for the BBs. <laughs> <All of that. laughs> do, you know what, do you know what he was? As a fullback, he was very keen. Very keen. But mm. he was also very poor. So that's when did, it, when did he play for Rangers? He played in the lowest league, I think. I think oh, right. That'll be no bad. Brett says it's got to be Grado or Stephen. Honestly. I'd say Carl- <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'd say Carlos Pena or Bruno Alves. Bruno Alves? Well, it's good to be in the same fucking league as Bruno Alves or something, isn't it? The thing with Bruno Alves was, right, you need to look back and go, the guy's had a distinguished career. He's played at the top level. He just played for us at a very poor time and obviously he came out here and didn't fancy it one bit. But he's not the worst player to pull on a jersey for us, man. Definitely. He's, he's, he's cool. still kicking a ball, isn't he? I think he plays for in Serie you know, A. We, he, play, he plays for it's a lower team in Serie A. He plays for a wee team in Serie A. But did he not go? Where did he go? Right for ages? Did he not get a good move somewhere? Went to Turkey. He, he played against us for Fenerbahce. I'm sure. Well, there we go. That was this week's big question. There's a lot of duffers in there. Thanks everyone for getting in touch. It's the player playoff. I, I change the name of this every week. It's the Pro Set Player Playoff. Whatever we're calling it this week, it's back with piesports.com. That is a website that you go to to get pies, get a taste of Scottish football. Uh, we're missing our, the games at the moment, so this is a chance to get the pies in for the games at the weekend. Loads of great uh, offers up there, loads of great packages. You get Bovro with the pies as well. You've got Scotch, steak and gravy, chicken and chorizo, curry, all that sort of stuff. You can get involved at piesports.com or you can give them a call on 0141 739 999. 0141 739 They'll deliver free of charge to a lot of postcodes. You can check out the website for those. Uh, and you can get them in for Friday and Saturday. Uh, enjoy the football with a pie, which is nice. Um, we try and give away a package every week on Football Daft. And this week is no exception. Um, we play this game, and on the line to play today is Sean Hunter. How you doing, Sean? Ah, good. How are you doing? All right, Sean. Good, mate. All good, mate. All good. Who do you support, Sean? Uh, Rangers. Rangers. There's a shock. There's a surprise. That's a turn off the books, that, and I show it. It's so refreshing. It's so refreshing to get a Rangers fan on the show. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, this week, guys, we're going back to the 2013-2014 season. That was the season Celtic won it. Motherwell t- came second that year. Top goal scorer was Chris Commons. And that was the year Hibs and Hearts got relegated down into the championship as well. Sounds like what? one shit season, man. It's uh, a belter. I, Fucking belter season. Well, you, I can't remember if you guys were League One or Championship that season. Was it League One, maybe? Aye, it would have been League One because Rangers get promoted the year that Hibs and Hearts get relegated. That's right, yeah. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Kiss. Aye. That was great. So, anyway, that was the season we're going to. Um, if you don't know the rules of the game, very simple. Uh, I'm going to read out the description of a player from that season. If you know who it is, you buzz in. Um, if you buzz in, however, and you get it wrong, it cans over to the other person. First to two wins. Um, let's get, what's your buzzer going to be, Sean? 
It's a catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Uh, right, let's find out who you're playing this week. We'll go draw out the name here. Is that? And it is... I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> it is lucky you're not doing it. It's Chris Toll that's doing it this week. <laughs> ah, fuck. Right, OK. I would, I, would, I would really struggle that season. I, I know I would. Right, Chris, what's Give your... Give me a pure Mickey, man. Isn't it what I had struggled? <laughs> Struggling, struggling what, boys. What's your, gonna be, what's your buzzer going to be, Chris? Fuck's sake, Duffy. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> right, That's here better. we go. First player out. Um, this player began his club career with Aberdeen, progressing through the ranks to make his first debut, team debut in 1997 as a centre half. Um, he went on to make 300 appearances before. Fuck's sake, Duffy. It's a castle trap. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> it's Andy Considine. It is not Andy Considine. Oh, I will tell no. you with the clues. Um, he went on to make it, It's a catastrophe. John. Is it Russell Anderson? Boom, one point to you, my man. Oh, yeah. this guy's Russell good. Russell Anderson. Nice. Right. Okay. Just one a more, guess. One more to win this then, Sean. See if you can get back in it, Chris. Right, next player out of the hat is... This player became a huge favourite with the St Mirren support for his no-nonsense approach to players, matches and referees. Many fans liken the midfielder to club legend Billy Abercrombie, who enjoyed a, a spell in a similar style. This player signed a con new contract with St Mirren in January 2012 after Hibbs had expressed interest in signing him. He was suspended for the first two games. That's a catastrophe. Sean? Is it Jim Goodwin? 2 0, sir. Well played. Oh. <laughs> well played, mate. Well played. Do you know what? Hey, hold, on, you? hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. A couple of weeks ago, I get beat. No, I won. I still got abuse. So, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, Tom? What the fuck's wrong with you, mate? So, what are you doing? So, what's wrong with you? 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 Well done, we'll get the pies sent out to you and thanks once again to piesports.com Get your pies in for match day Right, please welcome to the show a man who has had two spells in Scotland starting at Kilmarnock with a loan spell from Watford in 2010 he returned in 2015 with Rangers playing in the Championship under Mark Warburton and then Pedro Cachina it is Rob Kiernan, welcome to the show Rob how's it going? Thank you guys, thank you for seeing all good, all good. Mate, mate, tell us the new, where are you? Where are you the new? I am in Sully, California in Orange County in the United States of America There you are. Do you know that's what? A, I wish we'd just... life, that is the fucking Aye. life. I wish we'd just done like a kind of jolly boys that says, right, we'll come to you and we'll interview you. I'll, I'll take you out and show you the ropes because it's a, it's a joke of a guy to me, is yeah. Oh, I bet you it is. And what's happening with lockdown and all that earlier? Is there, what's happening is there, everything shut up. Shut, you hear about it, Joe Rogan talks about it in California. I mean, all lockdown and all that, no, carry on. Okay, yeah, county, every, every, every county has different that sort of rules, regulations. The, the police department here, the sheriff department have said, don't don't call us anything COVID related. No no restaurants have been shut down. It's just outdoor dining. The gyms have to have like a door that's like open, for example. Um, and apart from that, boys, it's been normal. Like you know, I, a lot of people here just getting on with the days, and it's just not been an issue. Wow, very interesting. I wonder I wonder why there's been quarter of a million died in America. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, I know. Yeah, those numbers are a little bit. I think I, I think they're, they're just here is everything's been manipulated a little bit. So uh, I think people yeah. have their own views, you know. Totally, man. So how how's life at Orange County? Life here is stunning. Um, like I said, I, I, in terms of just life, you wake up on the holiday every day. You know, you wake up oh, to the sun. Man. You know, I'm five minutes from the beaches. You know, it's a different way of life. Is it's not just you know football. It's like your whole life outside of it as well. It's incredible. Where did you stay when you when you played with Kilmarnock? I stayed in the hotel that they gave me outside the stadium. So oh, the Rugby Park, Park Hotel? Park Hotel. Oh, I have. That's, 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 that's all right there, isn't it? It's so Southern California, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 bet, I bet the pies were better, though. <laughs> yeah, the weather's quite similar. 
Aye. Well, it's kind of like with Park Hotel, you just kind of fall out your room right onto the pitch there, but don't you? I know. Hey, come on. Well, and, it's right yeah, there. And the minus 84 degrees, and then it gets old to <laughs> run around on that pitch, so. Yes, oh. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Rob, I was looking through your Wikipedia yesterday, right? And you've had a lot of clubs in your career. Um, which, which one of them would you say, with the exception of Rangers, I know you're going to say Rangers, right? But with the exceptions of Rangers, what was, what was your favourite club, would you say, Wigan? You might not say Rangers. You might not say Rangers, too. Stop, don't answer yeah, these no, questions just, for him. Stop. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you, you, you take your answer out of my mouth. Aye. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, so let's just, let's just go back through it. So, yeah, I mean, as a youngster, like, I was desperate to go and get games and experience because I was, I was, you know, for my sort of under-18 sort of, you know, phase of life, I was, you know, probably one of the better players and it was never going to challenge me. So I went and I went alone. I knocked on the gaffer's door every week. So kind of go here for a month, kind of go there for a month. You know, I just wanted games, you know, and I think a lot of the kids get lost in that, 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 that period now where there's like, they're too good for these reserve games, but they're not challenged, challenging themselves. So my mindset was just like, I'm going to go and loan, go and loan, go and loan, go and loan. Um, but I think my favourite loan spell I had was, was Brentford. That was amazing. I was close. I was living at home still. Um, the boys got promoted, you know, that season. Um, and, like, it was just a great, great change. Um, mm-hmm. And it was just a great experience. So, in terms of my loan spells, that was definitely my favourite. Um, and then, obviously, you got called back from my loan at um, South End at the time to Wigan and actually managed to make my debut against Watford, my previous team, you know, as a boy. Um, so, that was an amazing feeling and, and done really well there. And then, um, got some games under my belt, done, like, a season and a half there. Went to Birmingham. That was that was an amazing play, club as well. Good good standard. And then obviously went to Rangers, which was yeah, like you said, my my, my highlight of my career. I'd say definitely. When when you were at Wigan, uh, <clears throat> were you made aware of the interest for Rangers at the time? It was your mind so made up right holiday. away. I was on holiday and I got a phone call from from Mark Warburton who said, "I'm getting a Rangers job. Um, don't sign for Birmingham." I was like, "Listen, I've just done my medical. Like they've offered me a contract. I'm going to go and sign it." Um, that was the kind of vibe I was on when I got back from holiday. Anyway, so I'm going up to Birmingham now. I'm in the car with my old man and um, we're about to sign. Everything's good. Everything's paid. I get a phone call saying, listen, I've got the job. I'd like you to come here. So I literally pulled into a service station with my old man and just said, look, I've got a decision to make. You know, like, I either go up there or I, I, I stay safe and stay for stay at Birmingham. I know I was going to play. I like the manager. I like the club. I've just been on loan there. We've done really well. So I um, made that decision, mate, and just went up for it. Um, and yeah, that was a 20-minute chat in a, in a service station, you know. Really? That's that's <laughs> mega interesting. Yeah. I love that. And then see how the likes because I always wonder this about teams where so see the, you, you sign for Rangers. Like what's the first even before you signed, did you go on YouTube and look up videos and yeah, so see what see what the Ibrox crowd's I'll, like I'll, and stuff like right. that? Yeah, I'll just be totally honest with you, like obviously obviously everyone knows Rangers sell it and now how the intensity is and stuff, but like down there, it's not like the main focus. So like I didn't mm-hmm. really get the club so I got up there. Um, but my, my first rude awakening was it was just like as soon as I signed I was getting death threats from you know IRA all this kind of mad stuff going on and you you know you Catholic scum really? yeah my don't, don't, listen, don't, don't worry I'll phone them and tell them to leave you alone mate <laughs> really is that yeah, like, right man yeah before I, I even before I even walked in the building Mark you know the, the death threats and the, all this you know scum this scum that C word this C word that like, you know, I was getting stuck on the street, like, just because of my background, you know, like, this is my dad's Irish, and that's that's never going to change. I'm proud of that. You know, I've got an, I've got a Catholic tattoo in my arm because of my nan. She passed away, and I have a, you know, a, you know, Virgin Mary tattoo because, you know, it's for her. Now, that doesn't define me, but also when I'm walking to a club, I'm, before I even put, before I even walked into the stadium, I'm getting all this kind of stuff. It's, Did that make you think twice if I made the right move here when you started getting like death threats and stuff and you're realising the, Um, I mean, the extent of Yeah, I just didn't realise like how, how much uh, of the other sides that would be involved in terms of just, you know, just football and wanted to go for play for an amazing club and then before I even walked Mm -hmm. in the door, my my background and also I played for Ireland up to under 21 because I was a captain of that team and, you know, I was proud of that. You know, and then obviously as soon as I walk in the door or, you know, it gets put on Twitter and that, like, I'm getting <coughs> dogs abuse from all angles. So it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, I'm not going to say it was hard, but it was just like, whoa, this is a bit of a wake up. So, um, and throughout my time there, it was just constant, you know, like, it, like I'm, you know, my house got burgled, you know, attempted twice, you know, there was all sorts of stuff going on outside playing. And it's not, as, it's not just football up there, it's, especially having a background that I have, it's not as easy as everyone thinks, you know. Uh, did, right. did nobody, like, say to you, like, 
you've been you've played for the Republic of Ireland and stuff like that. There's a good chance you're going to get a bit of hassle going to Rangers. Not, because... not initially, no, not initially. Nice, no, mad. Because you see, that's the kind of stuff that you think that obviously affected you, and a lot of times folk don't think about what players have to go through if they're maybe having a bad well, game I, I, and they're I, getting. I had, a, I, had, I had an attempted burglary at my house at three o'clock, and I had a game at three, like twelve hours later. You know, so like you talk things like that, like it's no one knows, and I'm not here to like talk about it, but like there's all sorts of stuff that goes on in footballers' minds, and then you know you're under such scrutiny, and listen, every every opportunity to give you know get a bit of stick, you know, it was thrown at me. So from all angles, it's, it's just part and parcel of it, but. These are the things people don't realise because you know no one's gonna shout about it. It's just it is what it is. But you know, it's mad. Like, see, when that when that's happening, Rob, and you've signed for us, you're getting death threats, your house is getting burgled. Is there anybody at Rangers that you remember who kind of took you under the wing and went, right, look, everyone will be cool. Yeah, my, do you know what I mean? We my my neighbour, my, my neighbour was a godsend, Martin Lyon, uh, the Lyon right. family. I don't know if you guys know them, but massive, yeah, massive respect to them guys, and they they took me under their wing. They, I went, I used to go boxing at their brother's gym. Um, and he basically just looked after myself and Harry, you know, we moved into a house together um, when he moved up and if it wasn't for him, mate, like there, there was a lot of stuff that went, uh, got, that got sorted very quickly because of him and, uh, you know, just top, top family. They looked after us and, you know, where to go, where not to go. Um, and even like nights out and stuff, you know, we'd have Robin, the security guys say, listen guys, where are you going? We'll have eyes on you. And, you know, when the house got burgled, we had security for 24 hours a day, like, all that kind of stuff, you know. What about the football side there? When you played with Rangers, did you? Yeah, stunning. Listen, like we've got you could think I think you got member as well. Listen, the, the the expectations from those fans is is rightly so so high. Um we walked into the building under wolves who plays a, a certain style of football and as a centre back you get exposed a lot. Like you you know, aye, we, we score we, we concede three but we try and score four. That was our sort of you know mindset and attitude. So I remember it well, mate. <laughs> yeah. mm. So the, the, the mindset of, of, of us is like we're um, we're new players, you know, we don't really, you know, we're new to the building, new to the country, we're new to all the media, like it's a whole different ball game up there. Um mm-hmm. so we were went there trying to get that success, trying to play a certain style of football. But you know, after us after you know six months of playing, people know what your style is, people know how to combat that, you know, and we had to we had to find other solutions. And at times I think we were maybe a little bit one dimensional in that in the, in the effect that was so adamant on what we were doing that maybe it, you know, maybe it didn't work out that's as what, well as we might have Aye, that's what I always remember. Like, I always remember Mark Warburton saying, Plan B was to do Plan A better. And that like rattled you're saying, a few folk, didn't aye. it? That was... And I, I remember sitting at Ibrox and you're watching Fodringham get the ball, he gives it to you. You've got about two men charging you down right away, and you're wanting to play out for the back. And you just know that's the way you've been drilled. How frustrating as a football player? We used to have times you wanted to go, look, mate, we need to change this. Right. Yeah, listen, let's first of all, let's let's clear something straight up. I've got massive, massive respect for my woman. So I'll never that mm-hmm. talk down I'll never disrespect yeah. that. Real, 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 real respect. Um, but in terms of yeah, playing and being part of that, yeah, like of course. There were times I'm like, I can remember playing Hearts Away and it was just like an ugly night. It was the pitch was shit. You know, and and the thing is, we brought in Joey Garner, who let me tell you right now, he's he's one of the best I've seen there. Like he'll go and head a train. Like there's no there's yeah. no denying he's he put his head anyway. Mm-hmm. So like for us to to play that certain way with a big weapon up there like that, we can do that. It was just frustrating at times. And I remember, yeah, there were there was, there was arguments, there was heated moments, and you know, you've got to remember as well, boys, is that you, you go against the managers, you know. Um, game plan and, and mindset, you know, you don't play. So, so yeah, I don't right. know. You, have to, you have to do it or you don't. And no one wants to sit on the bench. So, yeah, there's there's opinions there for sure. But first of all, clean up. That, yeah, massive respect for Mark. I'm never going to talk, talk down his name. But, yeah, there were times it was frustrating, yeah. Do you know what I find interesting, boy? Do you know what I find this interesting? I know, boys, right? As a player can decide to go to a team down south, they could be in the Premier League, they could be in the Championship, but the, the minute they come up and sign for a Rangers or Celtic, you're right, it's they're exposed to everything in the media. They're in the they, they can be in the papers every day. And it's not just like the, the local paper, it's the fucking national paper. And I, I bet you there's quite a few boys that come up here and they don't realise that that's that's what's gonna happen, isn't it? Aye. It's not it's not just the back pages either, it's the front Aye. pages as well. Aye. 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 You know what I mean? So like I, I, I doff my cap to you because if a lot of people, if they had been under the scrutiny and had the threats that you had, 
it would have been in the papers and they would have, you know, like so to keep that under your heart, man, that's that you know, that is a lot of respect for you there. I must admit. What was it your thoughts about Joey Barton coming in coming to Rangers? Joey Barton is a top, top boy. Like, right. He, the animal inside of that man is crazy. Like the, the mindset and the, the winning mentality is crazy. Um he came to Rangers when obviously he wasn't at the peak of his performances and, and you know his legs had gone a little bit. But let me tell you one thing right now. That guy, you go to war with that guy because he galvanizes that squad and that team. I remember there was a, I remember there was a, there was a team talk I think before the old firm, and he actually, I think the, I think the manager might have been talking, and he got up his seat and just said, "Listen, guys, uh, no, no disrespect, Mark, I want, I want to take this," and he just sort of just reading off about, you know, like the passion and the hunger, and like just I remember it like yesterday, like he just, he had this, this, this attitude of just like. You know, I've come here to win. I haven't come here just to, you know, make numbers up. I've, I've done this, I've done that. You know, I'm going to go in there. This is like wartime. This is like, this is everything that I've played for is, you know, this is now the real deal, you know? And like, it was just the way he was speaking. It was just motivational and it was just like, I'm with him, you know? Um, and even in training, he demanded a lot. He demanded <coughs> around the training ground. But that's like, it wasn't, it wasn't just him. Don't get me wrong. He was just more vocal. He was just quite vocal. You know how he is. He's outspoken. Um, mm-hmm. And he has that respect for where he's been. But, it wasn't just him. It was the whole. It was the whole club. Like Warburton, he put installed that to us. You know, like and everyone on the training ground. It was like pure respect, pure. It was not like a case of you had to tell people to do because the standards were that high that it was getting done. Do you know, mm-hmm. um, training was I- training was nasty. Training was feisty. <laughs> you know, there's tackles. There's there's fighting. There's scrapping. There's words. There's, you know, it's 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 not a playground. Mate. It's it's real 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 football now. Oh, that's interesting, and I'm just wondering. See that 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 pre-match game. Well, surely was that a five-one game then? Where we could beat five-one. That was five-one, yeah. So it worked out. Worked out, worked out well then, I. Don't like the treat. Don't listen to him, Rob. What? See, see something like that, Rob. Where you're talking like uh, earlier on, you're saying Mark Warburton. If you you don't want to kind of go against the manager, saying you're not on the team. See that day. When we get beat five one, I remember there was a big the media thing about Joey Barton versus Scott Brown, blah blah blah. See in the dressing room after that game, what was it like? What was Joey Barton like in the dressing room after that game? Uh, yeah, just yeah, it's just fighting, fuming, shouting. You know, it's just kicking off. But it's it's all because everyone cares so much. We know the magnitude mm-hmm. of it. You know, so it's not. There must have, uh, there must have been a there must have been a wee bit of the whole. I can't believe he stood up there and gave that big speech and then he's not turned up on the park because you never get a fucking touch of the ball that day. I think I think that kind of that game just in the most respectful way just kind of showed him where he was he was at as a as a player at that time, you know. And, and also you got to remember, let me let me tell you something. So he's come from Burnley, right? And I know I've worked under Sean Dutch and I know exactly how he works. And this this guy is organised drill, they're hard to beat. They don't play expansive big football like we were trying to do. It's a completely different game. So let me try and break it down for you. When you look at Leicester, when they won the Premier League, yeah, do you know how hard they are to break down and, and be a solid unit? Because they've got people like Vardy and whoever else up there that are going to go and do the magic off a counter-attack. When you're yeah. the opposite of that, you're expansive and big, and the pitch is massive, and you're getting counted on. It's a completely different ball game. Joey Barton is not built to go and run and put fires out like, like a Kante, is it? You know, like he's not that player. Yeah. You know? He's a yeah. solid, you know, get tight, do your job, man mark, motivate, keep the ball, recycle. And use those boards up top, but we we won't play like that. It's a different ball game, and I mean different mm-hmm. ball game, you know, because you're expansive. So, for mm-hmm. example, I remember like yesterday, I gave the ball away. Um, I tried to find a pass through a gap, like we've been working on, like trying to find those holes, get those people danger men on the half turn. Give the ball away, you have got a lot of space to catch up with. You know, you have got like half a bit to do with, Aye. and you've got boys Aye. that are, you know, Dembele. Let's be real, Dembele is an athlete, he's a monster. So, you know, you give them space, mm-hmm. give anyone space. You give anyone space, they're going to do damage. If you don't give them space, like Leicester do, don't give them space, then you've got to have your, like, your Maris's or, you know, your boys that can just give you something out of nothing and go and get your goal. Give anyone space, mm-hmm. of course you're going to do damage. So, it's mm-hmm. a different totally. type of ball game. Joey Byron's come from Burnley. Aye. Now he's playing for us. It's a different, different ball game. Aye. He didn't have a proper pre-season at Rangers either, didn't he? No, because his TV commitments. Did. Even send it like yeah. Big Phil, like he had like two, two games, two days training, two days training yeah. after doing nothing for like six weeks. You know, like come on. Yeah. Yeah. How, like, how did you go on? Mate? These are things that people don't see. You know, like these, these, these are the background things people don't see. So you know, no. you're not. No, to totally, mate. Totally. Aye. How about what about Davy Weir? What was he like on the training ground? 
yeah, legend, man, legend. Like, Aye. I just wanted to absorb everything good from him. You know, like he was just, you know, he was his class in every manner. But like, like he was playing. You guys probably know correct me. He was thirty nine playing in. Aye. Aye. Like, yeah, that's. He signed for us under Walter Smith as like a six month contract as a stopgap and was there for about four right. or five years, whatever. He's, he's the definition of a Rolls Royce. Like, he's just like, you know, I remember watching him for Everton. I'm just thinking, uh, he's just a cut above, you know. But like, that's that's like, that's a different pedigree of football I've with that experience. And physically, he must have been in some nick to, to be playing right. those type of games. That was great, man. So, yeah, listen, like, nothing, Aye. nothing but legend status for him, man. Definitely, man. I think I think so, he is a sort of player as well. Even like, across the across the city as well, you look at him, you, you do have a respect for him. You know what I mean? He's he's a seasoned professional, and he's got that kind of respect for all angles. You know, so uh, you're definitely right there. What you're saying. Right. So, Rob, is, was it a bit of a shock when obviously Warburton and we are left Ibrooks? What what was, was that just news yeah. to you? The baffling ones, to be honest with you. Obviously, we've seen a little bit on, on the old Twitter and you know just through word of mouth and that. But um, to this day, I don't really know the ins and outs. But you know, I think I can read between the lines a little bit. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, it was disappointing to see him leave. Obviously, because then, then you're thinking, well, you know, you've been brought into the club by these people, so you know, yeah. Listen, every manager wants to bring in their own team, and 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 also let's not be let's not be uh, let's not beat around the bush. You know, the next guy comes in, and there's a lot of deals going on under the, you know, under the radar, and things going on behind the scenes that people won't know about. So, listen, you know that your time's probably going to be up, and you're going to be have to be uh, moving on. But that's the that's mm-hmm. football, and that's, you know, I'm sure you guys are aware of what goes on behind the scenes. But there's mm-hmm. a lot of politics as well. So, um, how did you think of Shinya when he came in, mate? Uh, miles off it, yeah, absolutely miles off it. Really, right away, and is it and, and yeah, is is a full squad pick up on that? Oh, yeah, every minute. But um, <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm not going to sit a bad nightmare, mouth. man. <laughs> I'm not going to sit in bad mouth people because it's not really my man. No. But absolutely mm-hmm. worst I've ever come across. Really, the worst. Yeah, the first day you come in, and it was like we're going to train on a Friday, but it'll be a Tuesday, and then you know, like no one goes in the gym, no gym allowed. Um, do this, do that. Like it was just. He... I those ways are going about things, and it just seems as if he's just trying to come in and do his own thing, and he's ruffled everybody's feathers. Huh? And he just, yeah, I remember him putting a presentation up of like where he was, and then I've left this to come here. You guys should be so lucky that I've made this decision, and I'm just like, you know, listen, oh, listen, listen. that angers me, man. That angers yeah. me because honestly, that's when. I mean, me and Greg got massive. No, listen, listen, listen. He put a presentation up, like a PowerPoint, of like his home and his family and like um, the, 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 yeah, like his hotel rooms and like what he looked Check over. me like, out. Like, I've left this to come to work with you lot, so you guys should be, you know, you know, praising me. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. And then the he was a fraud, like, man. Miles off it. Yeah, it's a fraud, yeah. Biggest fraud, mm-hmm. I mean, I just, I still, to this day, I mean, obviously, the club had been through so much, and me and Greg are massive Rangers fans, but to this day, man, like, how he got that job, I'll never understand, because it was like... Like I said, guys, there's a lot of politics involved in football. Oh, aye, totally, man, totally, totally, mate, aye, totally. But, so then, did you did you know then, right, I'm off, I'm leaving here, or one way or another, um, I can't even work? No, I, I thought, yeah, because I knew that, obviously, he's going to bring in all his, his Portuguese guys and, you know, those name, names, and then I literally got... Uh, Got told that um, no, it, it kind of worked out in the sense that oh, I had really bad tendonitis. So even 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 uh, I had tendonitis and um, I was getting through games and stuff. It was never really an issue, but um, I knew that he'd use that maybe as an excuse because um, I wasn't allowed to go into the gym and stuff. Well, no one was allowed to go to the gym. So then he put all our stuff down to uh, the under 18s um, sort of changing room. We were to go and change there. Um, it was about seven of us and it was just like you guys can't eat with us you can't train with us you can't use the gym you can't see the physios you can't see the masseuses and it was just a case of like all right, well here's how it goes you play you know play a game on a Saturday and then the new manager comes in and you're out the door so it's like you know you take but, a bit of but is there any is there any obviously we've heard about the likes of uh, Kenny Miller and Lee Wallace but was it, was it visually like was it a, a, a kind of thing where he's maybe left the room and the user like what the fuck is happening here like what's happening yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's like a, it's like when the head teacher leaves the uh, 
the classroom and everyone's like, who the f- is that guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know. Yeah, but, oh. yeah, but, like, it's just scary. Like, listen, that's the biggest thing I've learned in, in this industry is just politics. So, right. Aye, aye. It's a tough time, man. But, well, but, <laughs> so, I mean, it's funny because if it was if we're talking about stuff that's mega depressing, but what was, what was highlights at Rangers? What was where you can go at him? Um, I remember, I remember beating them. At, I mean, be, beating the first time. So we beat them at Hamden, and it was a great of game. Course. Like, it was, like, that was one of the best it. days of my life. Yeah, I had, um, had my family in the stands. Like it was an amazing experience. Those old firm games are something special. Obviously, listen, that took a few losses and that, but just the experience of it all. Um, obviously, you know, the first season there, it was great. We were flying. I remember the first game. I think we beat Hibs like six, six one or five one. I think it was something. Like yeah, I uh, uh, Tavernier scored a great free kick, man. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And right. it was just like, you know, great times. Like, it was enjoyable. Like, listen, like, you go, you walk around the city and, you know, people, you know, you, you get the good times and you get the bad times, you know. And, and it kind of went out the window when, when the thing was going well. I wasn't really getting the, the Irish stick so much. And I wasn't really getting the abuse on, online, all that kind of stuff. And out, and even out, even out like, nights out and that, you know, you're getting you're getting stick from from both sets of fans because I'm playing deemed to be playing for the wrong team with the wrong background or the wrong religion, you know. So it was, mm. it was both angles. It wasn't just my fans. It was obviously them as well. So it was... Uh, Spend a lot of shit or that. When you're, going well, when you're going well, like it's you know, it's only one set of fans and that's them. And then when it's not going Aye. well, it's both set of fans, you know. So what do you do you still keep uh like keep track of the results and stuff? What do you think the Rangers are the new right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, listen, I love to see them do well. I love it. I, I follow them Aye. on Twitter, Instagram, follow all the Aye. boys that obviously I played with. Nothing nothing more than what I see is what they're doing now. Like Gerard's come in and just Aye. you know, the whole the whole vibe. It's amazing. And I listen, as you've been part of something like that, you 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 know, you feel proud to be say, let's you know, I've played for that team and look how well they're doing. You know, it's not, it's no, there's nothing else other than that. Um, oh, it's, listen, you're part of the story. Oh, it's part oh, of the. Yeah, yeah, you're part of the journey. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Was it? Was it? Was it now? Twenty-two points? Is it? Is it still that? Twenty-three. Down, Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Crazy, life's good life's Aye. good Rob life's good life's good for a Rangers fan you know, man. <laughs> that's why that's why he's fucked off I don't know where he's went to because he's a Celtic fan <laughs> you know what I mean? love it love it John John just cut John just cut him off now fuck him <laughs> <laughs> so what's the stat? I fuck him what's the what's the standard like over in America the standard of football yeah. Orange County no, it's really interesting to say that because myself and Harry, we've we've actually got an academy now where we sort of convey about young talent in Europe. So at the minute, there's brilliant man. Talent. I get a plug. So what's it? What's it? What's, what's the crack? What's happening? So obviously, I'm I'm, I'm still playing uh, here. Um, Harry's decided that um, he's going to go down the route of, of coaching now. He's got an amazing opportunity now with with Nike and um, all sorts of stuff. Brilliant. So he's he's in an amazing position. Um, but like we said, we're obviously we see these kids and we know the level of what it's needed to be back home. So we, um, Harry has a, has a company here, an academy that coaches these kids privately and with small groups. If they're good enough, we send them. If they're not, then, you know, there's other clubs here, colleges, USL teams, MLS teams. So that the talent's growing. And you've got to remember there's, you know, there's 10 times the amount of people here in the US than there are in the UK. So imagine mm-hmm. the market's so much bigger. And it's a growing mm-hmm. sport. You're not ever going to see it as your number one sport, you know, ahead of, you know, your NFL and your, and, you know, wrestling. Kind of yeah, yes. <laughs> um, but it's it really, really taking off, like really taking off. And I think they've got the World Cup here in a few years, so it's gonna just keep going and going and going. So, um, yeah, the, the talent, the talent pool is crazy, and a lot of the the big clubs we speak closely to a few a few big clubs and um, the scout network here is just you know they're really going for it. Brilliant, man! Like, yeah, so are you are you maybe some point in the future, Rob, looking into getting into the coaching side and management and all that? Maybe. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, we've got this uh, academy here that's growing really well, and we're doing great with scope stuff of it. And just seeing kids get a, a conveyor belt in the line is, is obviously going to be massive. Um, but yeah, the coaching here is is, is out out this world. Like you know, the facilities that are open just to the public. Like I'm talking like they're better than they're better than Championship. League One, League Two in England, in terms of like the facilities, like we 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 uh, have access to these these fields, and it's it's like nothing you've ever seen, like manicured lawns, and you know it's just like another world. Like as I can't explain to you, right. it's just like it's like essentially having like a Murray Park, but mm-hmm. it's it's open to the public. It's like that kind of vibe, you know that right. that space and that vibe. Yeah, it's crazy. Right, next time we do a live show, man, when all this pandemic stops, we're going over to California. Right, to fuck it, let's for the academy, man. Definitely. Have you got any plans maybe coming back to the UK? Do you think you'll finish your career out in Orange County? No, never ever coming back. Never? 
quite right. Never. Oh, <laughs> mate, I love that, man. No. I love it. I man. never can go back. That, this place here is paradise. I wake up to the sun every day. I go days off. I go my surfing. I go hiking. I go, you know, the, the, the nightlife. Everything everything under one roof is just like, wow. like I said, it's like living in the Um And, yeah, like, my world's here now, and I'm building and building and building, and there's so much opportunity are here. You, and, are you out for your dinner every night? I've got to be honest with you, I am, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> you man, I can have well, of Bro, course you would. Brilliant, man. Brilliant. Tremendous scoff there, <laughs> isn't it? I love yeah, it. Me, me and Harry, we've got, some amazing, we've got some amazing friends here now that, you know, uh, you know, showing us the way. They're very successful in their own industries. And, you know, you just absorb everything that these guys have done. And I know there's a lot of English boys here that are in the same boats as us, not playing football, but just, you know, come from, I've got we're actually really good friends of two Scottish lads who live in the same apartment blocks and, it's just, it's nice to hear accents that are familiar and then everyone's in the same boat. Everyone listens. You miss home a little bit, you miss your family that now and again, but just for me, it's just like, you know, longevity and, and building my life here now. Living the dream, mate. Living yeah. the dream. I, I, you, that's fucking inspiring, man. That sounds that tremendous. Is. Imagine if we us do there, man, fuck, fucking everything off and just going to there, man. I must use a wee bit, man, but... <laughs> You're saying the free is what is John no invited? Oh. <laughs> no, I meant I meant me you John. I meant me me you and John. Thanks, thanks very much. I've left on the bench, John. I'm gutted. Right. <laughs> Rob, so every week on Football Daft, we put our guests' football knowledge to the test with a 90 don't, don't second ask me quiz. Anything, you are. Mate, wait, mate. mate. He says, don't ask him anything. He's horrendous, but we need to do it, mate. We I should do it. Horrendous, but let's go for it. Let's go for it. I mean, I'll sit here on Google <laughs> on the slide and get you answers, but apart from that, there's no chance. That's fine, mate. That's fine. But we've got top of the leaderboard is John Sutton and Chuck Young with 15. We've got Mark Wilson, Keith Lasley tucked in with 14. A good job, a good doctor, Kenny Joker, Kevin Harper with 13. We've got Mark Reynolds in 10, Lauren Shankland on 7. Barry Feastenders is on the list as well. He's on 4. And at the bottom, it's a tie between Peter Lovingkrans, Derek Johnson, Craig Levine, and Mick Stu. Can, can, just, just, can, just, can I just put something out there just quickly? Um, obviously, my days are full of practice, training, coaching, whatever it might be, and I don't have uh, English Sky Sports. So there's, the only things that I catch up on are obviously just my Instagram and just the Sky Sports app. So you're really probably going to sit here and think, does this geezer even know football in, in any sort of like, slight terms? So fire away yeah, but surely, you've been, know, surely you've been oh. keeping up with the with SPFL on your Instagram and that do you know follow fucking <laughs> St Johnson's fucking time yeah. on it no? Rob Rob after you saying that I've I've just had a quick scan of the questions that producer John has put down and in technical terms you are fucked <laughs> <laughs> honestly I was fucked honestly. before you asked the question <laughs> you remember Rob you can't pass you need to give an answer Yeah. Uh, Barry face then was no, passing. Listen, it doesn't. It does, see if you don't know, just say anything. See anything, right? Because the geezer's a chuckle, man. To be honest with you, Aye. if I'm being honest. Right, in eight seconds, John, are we ready? Was Rob ready? <clears throat> yep. Sorry, man. Right. Who is currently third in the Scottish Premiership? Hearts. Capelo is the home to which team? Chris picks up dog shit. <laughs> Who did you score your first professional hat trick against? My first professional hat trick. Right. In the playground, mate, at school when I was about nine years old. And what year did you sign for Wigan? Two thousand and thirteen. Who was in temporary charge of Rangers before Stephen Gerrard? Oh, Graham Murray. What club was Graham Alexander manager of before Motherwell? Oh. I don't want to say someone English, but I don't think it is. Uh, Barry. Just, uh, that's wrong. What nationality is Celtic's Diego Laxalt? Laxalt, that sounds like Scandinavian or something, I don't know. How many loan spells have you had across your career? 418. Davy Irons. <laughs> Davy Irons is the manager of which team? Oh, kill Monarch. What club have just sacked a commentator for having a jobby? 
Oh my god, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. He talks about going for a, he talks about going for a shite. I think it's Hamilton now. Hey. <laughs> hey. I just did it on Instagram, mate. I saw it because that's all I get is Instagram. Yeah. Hey, wait, when he said, Great dog skipped a question. Then, so <laughs> no, you are, 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 are we going to, we going to allow him to answer the question that Gredo skipped? No. Kelfie Sigurdsson signed for Everton from which club? That could have made all the difference. That could have made all the difference. Uh, we'll go through your wrong answers, Rob. Um, third in the Scottish Premiership, it's Hibs. Um, Capo is the home of Morton. I've got to hold on my hand. I left in a question from got... last week. So it's I was a... going to say this. <laughs> I don't remember Rob Kearney scoring a hat trick against Dundee. I, know, I was thinking that. I know. But do you know what? He got a great answer. Well, so... the hat trick about goals in training. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Bye. So we'll give you that because you scored your first uh, hat trick on the playground. Um, Graham um, signed for Wigan in 2011, apparently, not 2013, Rob. Uh, Graham Alexander went from uh, Salford to Motherwell. Uh, Diego Axel's Uruguayan. Loan spells you've had across your career, we counted nine. Uh, I don't know if you've got any more. But, but Rob said 400 nods, so he must know better than you, John. I have given that, man. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, well, just, just, well. just a benefit of 418 sounds better, no? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we'll give you that then. We'll give you that. Uh, Davey Adams is the manager of Stairsweer, and well done, by the way. Jobby Gate Hamilton, it was Hamilton, so you yes. on with that. So that gives you a score of one, two. We'll give you great, what about, we'll the, give what about the Swansea Eagle? Yeah, we'll give you Gilby Sigurdsson as well. So, one, two, three, four, oh. four. Brilliant, yeah, man. Go, mate. There we go, mate. Oh, Same as Barry Fee's Do you know what, what I will say to you is there, Rob? You got more than a man that managed Scotland. I saw. Oh, yeah. I'm all over that. Who yeah, was yeah. Zachary Levine? Craig no, Levine, aye. Fucking Jock Brown. <laughs> Maybe you Of course it was Craig Levine. <laughs> Rob, honestly, mate, thanks for giving up your time for coming on. Really appreciate it. It's been a great chat, mate. Did you enjoy yourself? Loved it. You boys are good. You were a good laugh, man. Right, so what about that then, Troops? Rob Kearney, eh? Somebody was a good guest, wasn't he? Would you trade your life for his right now? 100%. <laughs> Incredible, like, man. What is it with these guys that come on here, man? They just fucking, we're sitting there like bags of shite and he comes on, man, sitting in the LA or whatever the fuck Listen, it is, mate, see if, we were, see if we were getting up to sunshine every day, we'd look like a million bucks and all. Mm-hmm. Aye, you know I mean? aye. It's one of the, probably... One of the guests we've had on that I've really enjoyed but hated at the same time because I want to be living the life he's living right now. That's it. But, That's it. But, aye, so uh, the, the Heights as well. A little bit of Heights. I was well really impressed with him, boys. Really nice guys, aye, eh? Aye, aye. Gredo's mates, man. He was, he was loving it. He was a bit different too, wasn't he? With the two guys on. He was, was, wasn't he? Was like, hey, guys, eh? Well, well, guys. Different, man. That's my pals for the radio, mate. This hey, is what I do, man. Hey, I interview pop hey, stars. He thought, was getting too nervous and all that. Was that actually? I thought John was your pal for the radio. Aye. I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've really thoroughly enjoyed your company trips. I'll see you all next week. Enjoy the football. <laughs> Stay at home. Wash your hands. And listen, don't be a comedian. Drink your milk. <laughs> That's it. Aye, aye. Fucking hell. Drink your milk. Your By the way, I just want to say one more thing as well, right? In fact, no, I can't be asked. All right, all right. See, No. Next week you can tell us where it was going to be and you can tell us your... Right, cool, right, well, that's it. Told, right? Uh, my, my, the chip plan's just about to go off, so I'll need to I'll need head, lads. I'll need, I'll 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 get an, I'll get an injury, so I'm going to make my dinner. See you later, Trips. Tidy. See you later, bye, boys, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. See you next week. Audio Frontier.